You want a war? You're gonna get one. Welcome back to Reliving the War and welcome back to March 9th, 1998. WWF Raw comes from Wheeling, West Virginia, while WCW Nitro comes live from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. The World Wrestling Federation are still on the road to WrestleMania, while WCW presents Uncensored later this week. As always, you can expect a video on Sunday that will cover the entire Uncensored pay-per-view, so please subscribe and hit the notification bell to get alerted when it goes live. I absolutely hate going through all that stuff with you guys, but again, WWE are taking down videos constantly and I'm spending half my time fighting claims instead of making videos, so watch the videos ASAP because you could be waiting for a while for them to come back to the channel. Alright, Nitro's first 60 minutes, let's do it. On Thunder this past week, Randy Savage stirred the pot a little by saying other members of the NWO want Hulk Hogan gone. Hogan doesn't realize it, but there's boys in the squad who want the Hulkster out of the faction. Savage also told Hogan to ask his wife who the man is. Big Linda loves a Slim Jim every now and then, apparently. So was Savage telling the truth about the NWO wanting to overthrow Hogan, or was he telling Porky Pies? Ernest Miller defeated Damien in the opening match. The cat's sporting a new look now that he's got nothing to do with that idiot Glacier. Speaking of Glacier, that boy needs to hurry up and come back to Nitro so we can all have have a good laugh. Someone who did come back though is our favourite referee. Mark Curtis is back on WCW television guys. Mark knew that his time was very, very limited but he wanted to keep doing what he loved to do so he's back in the ring and he's back officiating matches. The mandatory Hulk Hogan promo was up next. Eric Bischoff says, oh, steroid abuse, Hogan is a womam. Cool. Bischoff says if it wasn't for Hulk Hogan, Randy Savage's parents wouldn't have a roof over their head, Randy's brother would be living on the streets, and Randy Savage wouldn't be allowed in buildings around the country. Hogan says it was Randy's choice to bring his ex-wife into the business and drag her into locker rooms to be one of the boys, but Hulk says believe this NWOites, Liz did the boys. <laughs> Hogan says Savage is still by himself and the NWO still have Hogan's back, but in the cage this week Hogan won't need the NWO. The whole world's gonna find out at Uncensored that Hogan's here for life. Quick side note, that Hogan shirt's pretty sick. Lenny Lane and Sick Boy had a match next and guys I just have to say it, Lenny Lane was terrible, absolutely terrible. This was one of the botchiest matches I've ever seen on Nitro and it was all thanks to Lenny Lane. You can see here from the clips that he just wasn't good tonight and I don't like pointing these things out but it can't be ignored either. Sick Boy won the match with a pedigree or the cure. The Giant cuts an in-ring promo and he says he's been looking everywhere for Kevin Nash but he can't find him. The Giant tells Nash to make sure he's at uncensored so everything can get straightened out between these two. Giant says he and two friends heard what Hogan said tonight and Giant wants these two buddies to come down to the ring. It's Sting and the Macho Man Randy Savage. Savage says he doesn't feel alone like Hogan said because he's got two new friends. Randy also says that these three men are the bomb brother. And just then, Sting noticed a really scary spider on the top turnbuckle and he made that little shithead do the job. Savage continues on saying that this is a gut check for Hollywood Hogan. If Hogan can find two NWO guys who won't stab him in the back, then Savage, Sting and Giant challenge the NWO to a six man tag tonight on Nitro. Goldberg defeated Barry Darso next, completely destroying the Repo Man with a stiff spear followed by a jackhammer. Goldberg defeated Vincent on Thunder and he defeated Yuji Nagata three nights in a row leading up to this episode of Nitro. So just like that, Goldberg is now 45 and 0. Scott Hall and Kevin Nash then came down for two separate promos. While wearing a Hollywood Hogan shirt, Scott Hall says that Savage is wrong. The bad guy has Hollywood's back and Hall says he'll team up with Hogan later tonight. 
This Sunday, Scott plans on taking the world belt away from Sting at Uncensored, and it's Sting who's gonna have to prove that he's better than the bad guy. Nash then comes out and he puts on a Hollywood Hogan shirt in the middle of the ring. He seems a bit more agitated than normal tonight, but Kevin says if Giant Sting and Savage want a war, then they've got one. Hogan's enemies are big sexy's enemies, and Hulk will never have a friend like Kevin Nash. The booty man shed a few tears backstage when he heard this statement. Nash then says, It's sold out this week, Giant will feel like he's been detailed, completely forgetting the name of the next WCW pay per view. Dean Malenko then defeated Billy Kidman with a Texas Cloverleaf, and Chris Jericho wanted to know why the flock didn't attack his uncensored opponent this week. The boys get back in the ring after getting ordered to do so by the Ayatollah, but they end up attacking Chris, and Jericho has to make a quick escape. Big Ron Reese is now in the flock, so Raven's got his very own Yeti. Incredibly, Hulk Hogan came out for mandatory promo number 2, and he says absolutely nothing of interest. He basically says the NWO's stronger than it's ever been before, Hall and Nash love Hogan like a brother, blood's gonna flow like wine tonight in the Nitro main event, and Hogan's done with the Macho Man for life. Shooting their loads early this week, boys. Blackman and Shamrock vs. Rock and Farouk. Nitro continues on with Brian Adams vs. Kenny Chaos. The Rock continues to kinda distance himself from the Nation of Domination during the faction's entrance, while Steve motherfucking Blackman fights off negativity, evil spirits, and thirsty wenches with his saber sticks. Shamrock can't believe he's getting to tag with this absolute legend tonight on Raw. Blackman gets brought to the corner by Farouk, and it's right here where Blackman turned down an offer to join the Nation of Domination. We see an excellent super combo from Steve that ends with a sweet motherfucker kick. Farouk has to check that he still has a face afterwards. Shamrock gets to rub shoulders with greatness after tagging in, but his kick looks totally weak compared to the Mavuga kick, so weak that Farouk replies with a spine buster instantly. The Rock tags in, we see the big elbow, and it's right here where Kevin Kelly says that Rock wants this move referred to as the people's elbow. Blackman's aura makes the camera feed go all crazy as even broadcast equipment can't withstand the sheer awesomeness of the Mavug. Shamrock then tags out after countering a Farouk back body drop attempt and Rock comes in because Steve Blackman allowed it. The Great One had to see a chiropractor after this insane dropkick, but he does manage to pull off a clothesline. Blackman tests his might by letting the nation double team him, and he takes a big power slam from Farouk. The broadcast feed again goes all fucked up because there's a spinning back motherfucker kick right there. Shamrock gets tagged in, he takes Rocky out with a power slam and a Frankensteiner. Shamrock covers Rock, but the nation get in the ring and it's a DQ finish. I was just getting into this one too. Rock ends up telling the nation he doesn't need their help and he wants to take out Shamrock all by himself, so Farouk sends the boys back up the ramp. Kenny Boy ends up destroying Rocky with a belly to belly and an ankle lock on the outside. Kama Dilo and Mark Henry want to help out, but Farouk doesn't allow it. Over on Nitro, it looks like Kenny Boy Chaos is gonna job out to a biker Michael Liker. Brand wastes no time at all with a big old pile driver and a big boot puts Chaos down just as Kenny Boy was building momentum. Adam says, Welcome to our world at the camera, and mate, you've been in the NWO for five minutes. Button up, or you might find yourself relegated to, I don't know, an NWO B team perhaps? Chaos just stays on the mat and he lets Adams bully him around. Adams performs a belly to belly and he displays some serious strength with a gorilla press slam. Robbie Rage is gonna attack Adams from the apron though and this lets Chaos perform a jump and clothesline. He follows this up with a back suplex and then Robbie Rage decides he's gonna just jump off the top rope and attack this sturdy old NWO asshole. Unfortunately, Adams makes quick work of Robbie. Chaos then takes a tilt the world slam and Brian Adams wins. After the bell, Rage takes a tilt the world too, and just for shits and giggles, Charles Robinson counts Rage's shoulders to the mat. Is it is it worth destroying a young tag team for the sake of Brian Adams? We have that Conan vs Juventud Guerrera match next on Nitro, on Raw, DX cut a promo. 
Once again, Shawn Michaels is not in the building, but we will hear from HBK, who's in San Antonio scratching his nuts right now. Triple H says again that WrestleMania is X-rated this year, and he says China got into Owen Hart's head last week, and this week China might get physical with Owen if she wants to. Hunter then breaks the news that HBK isn't in the arena and the crowd boos. A replay gets shown of the super kick last week, and then we see HBK sitting in a diner or a restaurant. He says Mike Tyson joining DX changes everything at WrestleMania, but what's even sweeter than that is the fact that HBK said Austin was going to take a sweet chin music last week, Sean proved that Austin's just like everyone else who steps up to the heartbreak kid. HBK seems to get a little more serious when he says he doesn't lay down for anybody, and he's certainly not going to lay down for Stone Cold at WrestleMania. Steve Austin's nothing more than a fad, while HBK will always be in in the World Wrestling Federation. Sean's going to knock Austin down, drag Austin out, and HBK will leave WrestleMania still the icon, the showstopper, the main event, and WWF Champion. Triple H says he's got two words for the fans before sitting at the commentary table. Hunter's gonna hang around for the next match on Raw. Over on Nitro, Conan says Juventud Guerrera can't go around demanding matches, so Conan's putting a few ice cubes in the Hoovy juice so Guerrera can chill. The Hoovy vs Conan match isn't gonna happen tonight, but Conan found someone at the same height as Hoovy, the same weight, the guy possesses the same high flying moveset as Hoovy, and if Hoovy can beat this guy tonight, then Guerrera vs Conan will happen at Uncensored. Hoovy comes down to the ring, and then Scott Norton appears. <laughs> yeah, Hoovy has to beat Big Norton. Norton for a shot at Conan. Hoovy tries to attack early, but Norton chops him down, and back in the ring, Guerrera gets launched high in the air. He tries to come back with two drop kicks, followed by a springboard drop kick, but Norton stays on his feet. Hoovy goes for a springboard wheel kick, but Norton counters with a backbreaker. Guerrera crumbles to the mat after taking a chop, and the crowd get distracted by something else going on in the arena as the action continues. Norton locks in a full Nelson, but remember Hoovy's new motto, never surrender. If I were Guerrera, I would have gave up at the opening bell, I'd be like, fuck that, I'm out of here. Norton ends it with a shoulder breaker. Guerrera didn't surrender, but he did get absolutely wrecked. We have got Raven and Saturn vs Benoit and DDP on Nitro, on Raw, Owen Hart takes on Barry Windham. Owen Hart goes straight to the commentary table and Triple H hides behind China. Hunter tells Owen to get in the ring and get his butt kicked now because at WrestleMania Hunter's gonna kick Owen's butt again. Wyndham pulls off a big suplex, but Owen stands up right away. Wyndham then performs a hammerlock slam, and the camera feed once again goes crazy because Steve Blackman was using the restroom at this very moment. Owen performs a wrist lock, but Wyndham counters with a mean old karate chop. Owen answers with a back suplex, and Wyndham makes the European champion pay with a jumping lariat. Barry Wyndham stays in control when the match goes to the outside. Back in the ring, Owen takes a back suplex followed by a DDT, and Owen comes back with a backdrop and a spinning wheel kick. Jim Ross wonders how Triple H would go about wrestling Barry Windham at WrestleMania if Windham captures the European title tonight, and Hunter says, and I quote, I don't think we have to worry about that. Owen lands a missile dropkick and the match then briefly goes to the outside. When Owen tries to get back in, China hits him with a low blow, and that's going to be another DQ on Raw's War. Triple H laughs his ass off, and I can't let this slide this time. Last week, Triple H done this same thing, and I didn't mention it, but have a listen to this. <laughs> you hear that? That's Honk and Hurst Helmsley. Sick freak. <laughs> Ignored. <laughs> because he's done this so many times, I'm convinced he's doing it on purpose, like a weird party trick he does to pop the boys backstage. But if this is totally unintentional and Hunter does indeed honk when he laughs sometimes, then I'd maybe see a doctor about that. This Nitro tag team match happened on Thunder a few weeks back, but the dynamic's a little different this time because Benoit, Raven, and DDP are going to compete in a triple jeopardy match at Uncensored for the US Championship. Benoit and DDP have a heated discussion in the corner that this guy was highly invested in. Benoit and Saturn start things off, and Chris gets suplexed immediately. He does manage to soften Saturn up a bit, though, before Dallas comes in and Perry goes down with a swinging neckbreaker. 
Raven comes in, Benoit decides he wants to take over and Dallas doesn't look too happy about it. Paige does end up helping Benoit though when Saturn comes back in illegally. We go to commercial break and we come back to see Dallas getting punished by both of his opponents. Strangely, the teams have now switched sides and the heels are on the top left hand side of our screens. Dallas struggles to tag out and Benoit unintentionally makes things even more difficult for his partner. DDP does make a tag but of course head referee Nick Patrick and his stupid haircut doesn't see it and Dallas is now in real trouble. You ever notice in these types of tag team matches that the hot tag always, always gets made? I'm sure there are some obscure examples out there to the contrary and I'm not including specific storylines such as the Steiners breaking up but I'd say 99.9% .9 of the time the babyface waiting on the apron always get a chance to fire up and honestly these types of tag team matches happen way more often on WCW television. Wouldn't it be different if the hot tag never gets made and the heels just do a real good job of keeping one guy away from their corner? Anyway, you can't argue with results I guess. The crowd goes crazy when Benoit comes in and they get even more crazy for the German suplexes. But Raven then hits a low blow that kills the crowd for a moment. Chris counters the even flow with a crippler crossface. DDP stops Saturn from breaking it up with a super diamond cutter but DDP lands on Benoit and in Chris's mind, that's just not acceptable. Benoit and Paige start fighting and they end up getting counted out. There will be no alliances in the triple jeopardy match this week at Uncensored. Oh and thanks Raven, no reason to thank you really but thanks just for being you. After the match we get to see some sick kids who got a whole lot sicker when Goldberg and Disco Inferno paid them a visit in hospital. Disco wanted to give this kid a nitro shirt but our guy here noticed a fanny pack filled with goodies around Goldberg's massive waist. Needless to say the little dude felt better in no time at all. In all seriousness though hopefully these kids all pulled through and they felt better. It's great seeing kids meet their heroes like Disco Inferno. Davey Boy Smith vs Conan on Nitro, Aguila vs Brian Christopher on Raw. Let's speed run the Raw match cause I'm busting for some Davey Boy action but before that Jerry Lawler interviews Paul Bear and Paul doesn't want to talk about The Undertaker, he wants to talk about Vader for some reason. Kane destroyed Vader at No Way Out and he smashed Vader's face in with a wrench. We see the state of Vader's face here and yeah he's seen better days for sure. But some weird shit starts happening when Lawler again asks Bear about The Undertaker. You know with the cameras messing up earlier too this can only mean one thing. The whole arena is absolutely psyched that Steve motherfucking Blackman won his match earlier against the nation. Alright, German suplex from Aguila followed by a dropkick. Aguila gets Christopher's ass in his face after a botched springboard arm drag. Makes up for it though with a sick dive over the top rope followed by an Asai moonsault into a reverse DDT. We get flickering lights because Steve Blackman has just left the building while Christopher pulls off a full Nelson face crusher. Pile driver from Too Sexy, neck breaker from Too Sexy, botchy sunset flip gets followed up with a cheap shot on Takamichi Noku. But Aguila comes back with a sweet top rope arm drag followed by a top rope drop kick. We get more showing off with a springboard Herc and Rana and Jerry Lawler decides to get on the apron. Taka tries to stop Jerry but he pays for it, the referee gets distracted and Jerry stops an Aguila top rope attack but Mike Kyoda is no Nick Patrick. The referee sees it and it's a DQ finish. Christopher delivers a sit down powerbomb after the bell so Taka decides to get some revenge and that's how it ended. Right, good, Davy boy time. Check it out though, notice anything here? Oh yeah, Mark Curtis is gonna referee this bout. If we can somehow get a DBS chin lock and the finger guns in one match, I think I just might shit myself. So Conan won't wrestle Hoovy Juice but he will wrestle Competitive Juice. Excellent start from Davy with his twisty twirly whirly breakdance wrist lock counter. Conan performs a counter of his own but it's nowhere near as good as Davies. We see a big clothesline from the Bulldog, oh shit snap mare and BOOM! Davy Boy Smith Chenlock the first WCW chin lock from Davy Boy. Okay, that's great. We just need Mark Curtis to pull out the shooters, and this wins the award for best match of 1998. Conan gets out of the hold, and Davy takes a kick in. We see the rolling clothesline, so things aren't looking too good. Conan performs a low drop kick, and he tries a cover immediately afterwards, but Davy kicks out. We see a leapfrog from Conan, a leapfrog from Davy. Bulldog pulls off a par slam, and Bulldog wins. Curtis doesn't pull out the pistols, unfortunately, but I. Saved myself from soiling my underwear. 
I'm kind of confused as to why Davey would win this match though. Conan's the one in the storyline right now. Just seems a bit odd, but let's not complain. Chinlocks are back, boys. Steve Austin cuts a promo on Raw, and on Nitro we have a Ric Flair promo plus Chris Jericho vs Disco Inferno. We follow Stone Cold's journey from the back to the ring, and Austin says he's got a video he wants to share. He's been watching this all week and it's gotten him a little pissed off. Stone Cold gets the video played on the Titan Tron, and it's Vince McMahon announcing Mike Tyson as the baddest man on the planet. Austin thinks this is an insult to Stone Cold. The audience also think it's an insult to Stone Cold. So Austin's going to hold Raw hostage until Vince McMahon comes out of the ring. Jim Ross tries to reason with Austin, but that doesn't work out too well. And by the sounds of things, fans in attendance would be happy enough watching Stone Cold talk shit for the remainder of Raw. Jack Lanza and Jerry Briscoe come out and they tell Stone Cold to get out of the ring. Austin instead invites these two to get into the ring for a fight and they both end up leaving. Commissioner Slaughter has no luck either. Austin orders Slaughter to go to the back and get Vince McMahon. We see McMahon backstage and he looks a little concerned as Stone Cold says he'll beat Slaughter's and Vince's asses if McMahon doesn't show up. McMahon's refusing to come out so Stone Cold takes a seat. Pat Patterson then brings the least intimidating security team in the history of security teams down to the ring and Austin says these jokers won't do a damn thing, especially Pops over here. We have got Pops, aka Rolfus, Mini Perry Saturn, a uh, bank manager, and Dan the Least Severn, the four donkey man. Wrestling's most elite faction heads to the back and finally Vince McMahon shows up. Austin says McMahon blowing smoke up Tyson's ass makes him sick and he tells Vince to get in the ring. McMahon's insulted Austin for the last time and when Vince tries to say the baddest man on the planet is just a figure of speech, Stone Cold gives McMahon his own figure of speech, a pixelated middle finger. And then Austin asks Vince if he wants to see Stone Cold become WWF champion. If I were to begin properly documenting the McMahon vs Austin rivalry, this right here is where I'd start. because. While Vince doesn't answer the question here, he does answer it next week and that's when, in my opinion, the full-blown kayfabe Mr. McMahon character truly begins. The one who hates Austin with every bone in his body. Vince can't answer the question here though. Austin removes his fanny pack so this is getting serious guys. Austin gives McMahon a free shot and when Vince won't do it, Austin rips the pocket from his jacket, trying to provoke a reaction. Austin knows that McMahon won't fire him this close to WrestleMania, so when it's clear Vince isn't going to do anything, Austin gives the owner 10 seconds to get out of the ring before he gets his ass kicked. McMahon calls Austin a son of a bitch but he won't strike the rattlesnake. Austin knows HBK isn't here tonight but Triple H is, so Hunter's gonna be Stone Cold's target. Awesome promo, an absolute home run. McMahon's reactions were great and Stone Cold was great as always. On Nitro, Ric Flair comes home to North Carolina. The last time Flair was in Winston-Salem though, Kurt Hennig slammed a cage door in his head. So Flair says in just a few moments, Kurt Hennig's gonna walk down that aisle not to style and profile, but to get his ass kicked on Monday Nitro. Flair says when he's feeling down, he can come out to crowds like this and he knows the nature boy is alive and well. And when Flair gets done with Hennig tonight, the former Mr. Perfect will be Carolina Dreaming. Jericho again wears Juventud Guerrero's mask on his way to the ring. He's also got a Monday Night Jericho shirt on. Disco performs a hip toss followed by a back elbow. Jericho gets in a knife edge chop but Disco throws Chris over the top rope. This would normally be a disqualification but that rule was changed a few weeks back on Thunder. So there's no more DQs for intentionally throwing an opponent over the top to the outside. Jericho stops an apron double axe handle with a drop kick. Back inside the ropes, Chris kicks out of a sunset flip attempt and he drops Disco on the top rope, but Disco comes back with a pop-up spine buster that looked great. An atomic drop sends Jericho into the corner and Disco lays the boots in. We see a swinging neckbreaker and Disco thought he got a three count, but it was only two. Jericho then wins the match with a float over double underhook backbreaker followed by a lion tamer. The match had limited time, but I thought the guys made the most of it. 
The Quebecers, no, not the amazing French Canadians. The Quebecers take on Cactus Jack and Chainsaw Charlie next on Raw. On Nitro, we've got Booker T vs Chavo Guerrero. The camera feed continued to get messed up during the Raw tag team match, and the commentator said the guys in the truck had no idea why this was happening. Terry Funk was singled out early on by the Quebecers, and the heels done well to keep Chainsaw away from his corner, but Cactus gets the hot tag, and the match completely breaks down. Terry Funk wakes up and he tries a moonsault, but he misses his target. Pierre pulls off a top rope Hurricane Rana on Cactus Jack and it gets no reaction at all. Cactus avoids a Quebecers double team corner charge and this allows Mick to hit a double arm DDT. Cactus and Chainsaw win on Raw's War. The Road Dog comes out and he's now got his arm in a sling. He calls Cactus and Chainsaw a pair of hardcore fossils who's gonna get what's coming to them at WrestleMania in just a few short weeks. James says he's too hurt to get in the ring, but he invites Cactus and Chainsaw to fight on the entranceway, and Mick Foley gladly accepts. This turns out to be a setup so Billy Gunn can hit Terry Funk with a chair. Billy Gunn tells Cactus to never leave Terry's side again because the Outlaws are bringing the heat at WrestleMania. On Nitro, Eddie Guerrero surprised Chavo by following him to the ring for his TV title match. Eddie was upset that Chavo got a TV title opportunity before he did, but Eddie gets his shot at Uncensored. Eddie seems to be supporting his nephew tonight, but Booker tells him to back off. Eddie absolutely loves it when Chavo gets in a cheap shot and Booker takes some damage on the outside. Eddie coaches Chavo when the action gets back in the ring, and it looks like Chavo is happy to go along with what Eddie says. Booker finds himself in a chin lock as Nick Patrick tells Eddie to head back up the ramp. Booker lands a spinning back kick followed by a scissors kick. The onslaught continues with a spine buster, and Booker T ends it with a drop kick from the top rope. Eddie shows up again and he helps Chavo to his feet before hitting him with a brain buster. More of that tough love within the Guerrero family. We'll see if Eddie can do any better though this week at Uncensored. Paul Bear and Kane cut a promo on Raw, on Nitro we have that Flair vs Hennig match. Paul says The Undertaker made a mistake coming back and The Undertaker needs to understand that Kane and Paul were trying to do Taker a favour by sending him back to the dark side. The Phenom could have stayed with his parents, but no, Taker just had to make a comeback. Paul says Kane's destruction has just begun, Taker stepped into the inferno, a disco inferno, and that comment was a step too far because the bell tolls and the lights go out in the arena, the undertaker's standing there when the lights come back on, but then he disappears again. Paul says this isn't a game, at Wrestlemania Taker has to look at his brother eye to eye and the two are going to fight to the finish, when it's all over the undertaker will get sent back to the dark side and he'll never return. Jerry Lawler puts two and two together and he says the problems with the camera feed have all been caused by the undertaker, but we know better guys. On Nitro, Flair said before the match that this one's for Winston Salem, it's for WCW and it's for every horseman who ever walked the aisle. Mark Curtis officiates this match too and he's fucking absolutely ready for this encounter. Kurt takes a timeout after a big hip toss, the match resumes with some flare chops followed by another hip toss, Slick Rick then gets backdropped, Hennig repays Rick for those knife edge chops, Flair then gets sent over the top rope as is tradition and ravishing Rick Rude gets in a cheap shot. Back in the ring the two trade blows and there's a great spot here where Flair just waits for a dazed Kurt Hennig to approach him for another chop. Mark Curtis asks Rick Rude if he can borrow his N64 tonight and this gives Flair a chance to kick Hennig in the balls and the nature boy then decides to grab a chair. He sets the chair on Kurt's face, the crowd gets all excited but then the NWO show up and it's a DQ. I'm more pissed off that we got robbed of potential potentially seeing the Mark Curtis finger guns. Bret Hart ends up saving Ric Flair and the crowd goes nuts for the hitman. He and Kurt have a short fight that ends with Henny getting sent to the outside and we'll see Bret vs Kurt later this week at Uncensored. Again, I'm looking forward to that match along with the Triple Jeopardy US title match. Mark Merrill vs Goldust on Raw, Rick Steiner and Lex Luger vs Scotty Steiner and Scott Norton on Nitro. Luna and Sable have to be handcuffed to the ring posts for this one. Sable wants to get her hands on Luna, but Mark tells her to get those handcuffs on just like last night. Of course, Merrill doesn't deliver on his promises and Sable's left frustrated when all's said and done. Things start off well for Mark with a neckbreaker and a back body drop, but Merrill gets tripped up by Luna in a spot that Mark really should have seen coming. Goldust then takes advantage on the outside side and back in the ring Mero takes a jumping clothesline. Goldust then performs a suplex before going out to intimidate Sable and this gives Mero a chance to make a short comeback. 
back in the ring, Goldust ends up throwing Mark into Mike Kyoto and Goldust decides to grab the handcuff keys. Luna gets freed and Luna attacks Sable. Sable gets her face ruined by a Luna Vachon makeover and Luna also throws water all over Sable. Mark's all like, uh, what happened? While Sable shows a lot more emotion than ever before, to her credit. She gets freed and she chases Luna up the entranceway but the heels escape unharmed. Goldust and Luna then officially challenge Sable and Mero to a mixed tag match at WrestleMania. So at the biggest show of the year, Sable's gonna get a shot at revenge. Over on Nitro, Rick Steiner brings a dog out during his entrance and that poor thing doesn't want to be there at all. On the plus side though, we could get to see some physicality tonight between Rick and Scott Steiner. Norton takes a belly to belly from Rick and the dog face gremlin wants a piece of brother Scott but Scott doesn't look too eager. He actually backs away from the ring when Rick performs a back suplex. When Lex gets in though, Scotty's more than happy to fight and keep in mind, Scott faces Luger this week at Uncensored. Luger performs a clothesline and a forearm smash. Scotty then stops Luger from tagging Rick while in a state of sheer panic but Lex makes that tag and Scott runs away. Rick falls out of the ring here while trying to get his brother. The match resumes with Norton and Rick. Scott tags in when Rick's been hurt in the corner but the moment Rick fights back, Scotty tags out again. Rick goes for his second rope bulldog but Scotty pushes him down and that's the end of the match. Luger fights Steiner on the entranceway and the other two competitors eventually follow. The referee counts everyone out and so fans would have to wait to see that Rick Steiner vs Scott Steiner fight. Honestly, it's a golden opportunity for WCW and it's a match that many people would have wanted to see. Do you think WCW handled it correctly by giving fans what they wanted? <laughs> uh, no. Raw ends this week with a Mike Tyson interview plus Savio Vega vs Triple H. On Nitro we have that big 6 man tag. Mike Tyson says it's a dream come true to get involved with pro wrestling but he was always skeptical about visiting WWF because he was worried about how fans would react to him and how he would be treated. Jim Ross wants to know how Tyson feels about Austin shoving him on Raw the night after Raw Rumble and Mike says he's a former and future heavyweight champion of the world and Austin disrespected him. Tyson admits that Austin pissed him off and Mike can't wait to get his hands on Stone Cold at Wrestlemania one way or another. Jim asks about Tyson's involvement in DX and Jim warns Tyson that HBK and Triple H use people to get ahead. Tyson says everyone uses people including the man who's interviewing him right now. In regards to being a fair referee, life hasn't been fair to Mike Tyson, nobody cared about Mike and the way Tyson sees it, and I quote, fair is winning. Fair is winning? I don't, okay. Triple H takes on Savio Vega next, officials come down saying as Austin threatened to show up and yeah, seconds into the match Austin walks down to the ring and he starts hitting stunners left, right and centre. Out of nowhere Shawn Michaels appears in the ring and Austin takes another super kick and check it out, HBK hurts himself when performing the move, you can see it in his face and you can see him try to loosen up a bit. The WWF then pull off a Nitro special by leaving us on a cliffhanger. Sean goes to swing a chair at Stone Cold and then Raw fades to black. Cheap, dirty bastards. On Nitro, we have the original NWO against Sting, Savage and Giant. We have a war to start things off with all the guys fighting their uncensored opponents but it settles down to Sting and Hogan and Hollywood gets his head punched in. Hogan takes a clothesline followed by an inverted atomic drop. A poke to the eye brings Hogan back into it. Sting takes a few strikes in the corner followed by a running corner clothesline but Sting makes a comeback and he tags in the giant. Hogan falls into Kevin Nash and that's gonna count as a tag. The crowd pop when Nash and Giant square up to each other in the ring but Hall and Hogan attack the big man from behind and Giant answers with a double bear hug. Nash stuns the Giant though and he tags Hogan back in, Hogan then tags in Hall, Hall tags in Nash and in between these quick tags the Giant gets completely wrecked. The NWO continue to rotate in and out of the ring and this strategy is effective. Macho and Sting get agitated as the NWO begin choking the Giant but there's nothing the baby faces can do. Sting goes to the NWO corner but Charles Robinson stops the WCW champion from interfering. The NWO take Giant's neck brace off and now it's a question of how much the Giant can take. He ends up saying fuck this and he shoves the NWO and Sting away with one Giant push. Giant tags in Savage, Savage wants to get his hands on Hogan but the Giant still wants to fight Kevin Nash. The big man approaches Big Sexy and Nash backs off. These two end up heading back up the rampway so Nash and Giant are now out of the match. 
Sting and Hall then get in the ring and Scott gets taken out with a stinger splash. These two also go to the outside of the ring and that means Hogan and Savage are all alone. Unfortunately though, the fucking booty man shows up and he hits Macho with a chart buster. Hogan tells us this move is called the apocalypse, but no, it's not even worthy of being compared to a stunner. It's a chart buster. No, let's call it the fart buster. Booty man fart buster. Hogan covers Savage in the NWO wins the match. I'm not mad because at least the main event got an actual finish this week. Nitro was a lot more organized this week compared to last week and I thought the action in the ring was better on WCW's show, but Raw was way way more entertaining as the build up to Wrestlemania continues. From HBK surprise appearance, Austin and McMahon's great promo, The Undertaker spooking everyone out, the tag team opener, the WWF had a good week this week so I'm giving it to Raw. Raw's got 57 points, Nitro's got 53 points and we've got 14 ties. In the TV ratings, Nitro jumped up to a 4 point while Raw dipped down to a 3.6. WCW Uncensored 1998 is the next video in the Reliving the War series so please check it out on Sunday before Triple H sends the boys for me. Subbing and turning on notifications helps me fight off those pesky interns at WWE headquarters. We'll see Sting vs Scott Hall, Bret Hart vs Kurt Hennig, Hogan vs Savage and loads more so join me then and we'll see what goes down in Mobile Alabama. Raw's on Tuesday next week but we'll just compare shows as normal for Reliving the War episode 125. Thanks for watching everyone, may your horseman business dealings be of a high standard and take care. <laughs> oh, shit!